Thank you so much, Allison. Let me get my screen going. So can you see the, we the slides? Indeed. Looking great. Perfect. And now where did my all right. And I'm still presenting? No. No, you're still you've got your notes now. Oh yep. Ah, press that there. and see what happens. Uh, Am I? Yes, you have got your presentation. Perfect. Yeah, I wanted my notes handy <laughs> because, you know, that's important. So, hi, everyone. My name is Chelsea Bennett. I'm based in Washington, D.C., and I work for an NGO called Digital Green. As you can see on the screen, our, we use technology to help farmers lift themselves out of poverty. And today I'll be talking about our approach to reach farmers and communicate with them. Uh, particularly how we use video and also other channels to share information. And as Allison said, what we've learned and some of the obstacles we've also faced. So first I would like to um, describe who we typically work with. Um, we mainly work with smallholder farmers uh, with less than two hectares of land. Many have limited literacy, but increasingly farmers also have greater access to information, access to data plants and mobile phones and smartphones, especially in India, although this is not necessarily the case everywhere. But Digital Green works uh, mostly in India and Ethiopia and also other geographies, but our main um, area of work has been India. Uh, we also work with extension agents. Um, traditional extension, as I'm sure many of you know, has focused on those face-to-face -face interactions using you know, approaches like the Farmer Field School or others. Um, but as you are probably also familiar, there are, the extension systems are plagued with problems, um, mainly low budgets and low extension agent to farmer ratios, um, distances to cover, there can be really vast, um, but also other things such as uh, a need to um, upgrade extension materials and change the curriculum to update it to market needs and whatnot. Um, we're moving towards a more pluralistic extension model in which digital solutions can be cost effective and also support the efforts of the extension system on the ground. So at Digital Green, we tested an approach called the community video approach um, through which relevant agronomic content is shared via short locally produced videos that are by farmers for farmers and feature farmers themselves. And these are typically screened in group settings, such as uh, some sort of community meeting, village saving loan associations uh, meetings and uh, using these handheld projectors, as you can see on the screen. Through this approach, we've reached um, 2.3 million farmers, mostly women, and we've worked with 46,000 government extension agents. Um, we've also had our work evaluated through various rigorous randomized controlled trials. And here are some key findings. Um, they increase, there was an increase in uptake of practices up to 50%, an increase in yields up to 46%. And this really, you know, depends on the crop. Um, increase in incomes up to 17% and 7% or seven times the cost effectiveness. This is especially relevant now during COVID and with travel restrictions that, you know, we've been able to continue reaching farmers uh, with an adapted approach, which I'll get to in a little bit. So we've learned a ton through the implementation of the community video approach. And one key learning is the importance of partnerships. Uh, we, we've been working with local extension departments and therefore that's a system that is already in place. This helps us with the sustainability factor. There's a, a system, the extension agency that can continue the work going forward. And although I mentioned earlier, a lot of extension systems are, you know, have low budgets and um, issues of that nature. Um, we've been very fortunate that our government extension partners have really bought into the approach, seen it work, and have invested in equipment and staffing costs and so forth to implement this approach. 
Another key element is um, working through existing social networks, such as self-help groups, for instance. Uh, this builds on trust and the, social and the social cohesion that helps drive behavior change in farmers. Um, a question we keep asking ourselves is, how do we replicate social cohesion in a digital setting? I will address that in a little bit, but keep that in mind. Something else that we've learned is the importance of facilitation. Uh, we don't just show the video and like it's a going to the movie theater. <laughs> we actually train extension agents to facilitate discussions, ask questions, and then report back on the feedback from farmers. This helps us improve content, improve the approach. You know, we add elements of pedagogy and adult learning so that you know the facilitation is um, you know helps create the discussion and also hopefully incites those farmers attending these meetings to adopt the practices. We've also learned that the local context and peer-to-peer -peer learning is very critical. Um, when we screen these videos, farmers, the first question farmers ask is typically, who is that on the video? You know, from what village is that person? So you can tell that, you know, seeing someone like yourself with, you know, in a similar village with a similar uh, climatic agronomic conditions, like that is powerful. So we found that featuring farmers themselves in these videos actually increase the adoption of practices. And I feel like I'm gonna make a lot of similar points to Ariel which um, to Ariel's point um, of hearing it from multiple sources, I think uh, I, I am helping make that point, I put that point across, but I also wanted to talk about the importance of tailoring content for women. Through a couple of experiments in Indian Uganda, we found that when messages were given by women to women, it increased their knowledge, their participation in decision-making and adoptions of agronomic practices. Uh, and by knowledge, I mean, there was actually like a test, that, like a pre and post test and, you know, against a, a control group. Um, and in and, and this, the, all these increases uh, were against um, getting information from male counterparts. So now that I've uh, explained to all of you a little bit about our community video approach and how we can communicate with farmers, I wanted to tell you a little bit more of how we used it in particular for pest related issues. Um, as you all know, you know, these pest issues seem to be evolving. We need better and more timely early warning systems. So I just wanted to kind of hone in on that a little bit. In Kenya, we use the community video to train extension agents at the county level, how to produce videos on the mango fruit fly. So that includes things like control measures, for instance, different types of traps. Um, and that is basically the knowledge on, on video production and dissemination that resides with the extension department. Um, we are starting a new project that will use a similar approach um, on video production working at the county level. And in this case, it's with a desert locust mitigation. But we're working with a partner who will bring um, the climate and weather data aspects to it so that there could be communication and warning systems when there's swarms that are arriving. And related to the fall armyworm, um, we tested in Ethiopia the integration of messages to control fall armyworm. So we produce videos and showcasing um, practices to control the fall armyworm. And these were viewed for by over 25,000 people. Um, the videos promoted things such as pathogen verification and also encouraged farmers to call the Integrated Voice Response or IVR line, which was operated by the Agricultural Transformation Agency. And then farmers could report um, sightings of fall armyworm on their plots, um, ask questions and, you know, report whether they needed chemical treatments that maybe that was not locally available and so forth. But the results that we got were not what we were hoping to get. We were hoping to hear that this integration was going to be fabulous, but instead we learned that integrating data was extremely tough. 
we had video viewership data and the adoption of practices data through video viewership. We had survey data on fall army worm incidences. We had pheromone trap data and all of it had different levels of granularity. And it was just not, we couldn't make much sense of it. Um, but basically all this technology we were using between the IVR line and the video and the traps, you know, it was not our silver bullet. But this situation got us thinking about data. Um, and actually the findings served as the evidence for the creation of an interoperable protocol for secure data sharing and exchange. And the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and the United Kingdom's foreign, the FCDO is a foreign cooperation development office, um, have invested in, a, in this protocol called FarmStack, which Digital Green has created, that is allowing us to um, secure the data exchange for data to talk to each other, basically. Um, what we've been also focusing on in relation to this and the learnings from this uh, um, work in Ethiopia is that, you know, farmers have to have agency and have to know what they're sharing and what, what is their data. You know, their data has a lot of value. So what we are hoping to do is that, you know, create the, the secure exchange data exchange system so that uh, their data is protected and then farmers can choose what information they want and need to, you know, support their work. And that's a little worm right there on their hand. Um, but we've also, um, Three minutes, learned, okay. We've also learned that, um, integrating channels or how information is share shared can reinforce messaging. Um, some channels are just better for static content like videos, um, but other channels like IVR or SMS or text messaging is better for timely content delivery like early warning systems. We've also learned people have different styles of learning. Some people learn by doing, others are visual learners. So the key is to really have all these channels available that integrate um, or that ultimately drive to behavior change. Um, We've also been working on using WhatsApp, especially in India, where it's uh, very popular. Um, I mentioned the importance of social cohesion earlier, and we've been trying to replicate uh, that on an online setting through WhatsApp groups. Um, it's very tough, but we've learned that the facilitation of a trusted extension agent is helpful because it helps mirror that sort of so social network that it, you know, is on the ground. We've also tested chatbots to communicate with farmers and a chatbot is a computer program that is designed to simulate a human conversation. The cool thing about a chatbot is that it's not just a push of information, but the farmers can pull or ask for what is needed. Um, but there's been a lot of um, things that we've learned about this is that typing in some languages is very difficult and therefore voice memos can be popular and we need to think about the integration of voice technologies. Also, while many women have access to phones, uh, sometimes they don't get to keep the phones with them at all times. So we've been encouraging uh, that listening to IVR messages or engaging with a chatbot is done as a family so that everybody gets to participate. Uh, another challenge has been onboarding farmers who may, um, you know, through our service, we found that the majority of farmers find chatbots to be useful, but sometimes they think it's spam messages. So it is important to socialize this idea in advance and to build um, community trust. Um, but it seems that a lot of this um, community building, trust building can fall in the extension agent. And that's a person that's already pretty busy. Um, but our idea is that these digital tools then become something that the extension agent can use to really reach more people more widely and complement that in-person support they're already providing. So hopefully it's a way to reach more people uh, in more in an easier way. All right, um, I'm going to wrap up with some key takeaways to effectively communicate with farmers to drive behavior change. And the first one is putting the farmer first um, and, and really getting feedback to help us iterate on content and design. 
secondly, as mentioned earlier, technology is not really a silver bullet. It, it's a definitely an amplifier, but it's not a be all end all solution. Um, then the human element is really important. The partnerships and networks, all that is really what makes um, a lot of these messaging and behavior change work. Data is also a great amplifier. It is, helps us be more precise. Um, but of course, they're, they're, we need to make sure that data can be exchanged securely and efficiently. And lastly, um, integrated, the integration of channels can increase reach and impact. We don't see it as a competition, to the contrary. Uh, layering, video, radio, um, you know, SMS, et cetera, can definitely help farmers and help us um, you know, communicate with them and drive that behavior change. So with that, uh, thank you. I will stop sharing. Thank you so much, Kelsey, and it was um, excellent. It's great to see the success you've had with informing farmers uh, and changing practices in the field with, with your, you know, your use of the videos, for, for example, and these other, other channels. Um, really, really nice to see the selection of local farmers and how important that is. Just a question around that. How, um, how do you select them? I mean, is it difficult to get local farmers to appear in your videos? It hasn't been tough. I think, um, you know, we work, again, we work, we really rely a lot on those social networks. You know, we will get recommendations from our, um, uh, you know, the extension workers we've been working with to, you know, who, who may want to be featured, who has something to show. So it is an exchange with, you know, the, the community or with ext extension agents who help identify those people um, who want to be featured, who, um, who are sometimes the first adopters. Yeah. And, and do you need to create different videos to reach out to different groups? For example, for women, are they, are they videos that obviously have women in, in them, but are there different ways that you communicate to different segments within the farming populations? Yeah, yeah. So for sure, we're creating many different types of videos. I think our YouTube channel has something like, I don't know how many, <laughs> like 6,000 videos in 50 oh, wow. different languages. So yeah, yeah a, a lot of videos in, in very localized and very tailored because we find out that, that that's a key element and mm. to, to drive that behavior change. So yeah, they, they're definitely... Um, very much tailored to their needs also to you know as you said uh, to women farmers versus the male farmers sometimes the youth farmers you know yeah. we want to make sure we we target those segments great and um have you have you designed or combined your digital green kind of resources with local radio and tv stations uh, efforts as well i i don't know if TV necessarily. Um, I definitely know that with radio, we've done um, alignment, for instance, mm -hmm. where you know we will maybe be showcasing at the at, at a regional level a set of videos about a certain practice because it's the right season, and then in coordination with other groups, yeah. um, you know, this is similar dissemination of information, same similar messaging on radio. Yeah. Um, question here, if women don't own the mobile devices sometimes, do they share it with their husbands and male family members? And do you see a difference in between, like, for example, you're working in India, do you have you seen a difference with that behaviour around phones and who uses it uh, compared to Ethiopia? Yeah, so, yeah, in many cases, it's like the family cell phone, the family smartphone, and you know, typically the male head of household may keep that during the day, but then it's available for the family to keep in the evening, for instance. So uh, we've seen uh, many different uh, ways um, of how the, 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 the phone is shared in the family unit. Um, and this is more so in India. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm actually not exactly sure um, in Ethiopia how it's shared or um, if it's shared. Um, yeah. I don't know, um, I don't have information on the data, uh, on the data plans, for instance, but I do know um, certain things that include that data in India, for instance, is much cheaper. So our ability to use 
to do experiments with you know chatbots and whatsapp yeah, groups yeah. it's because that data is is available that that's not necessarily the case in in other cases just like um someone meant uh, there was a question earlier from uh, you know from afghanistan for instance um, there's some uh, areas habibula said that yeah there's no access in rural areas so you know in some places it just would not work it would have to be an in-person facilitated approach yeah yeah excellent one last question for you and then we have to go on to our next speaker um but this one is um it's a good one as in it says thank you for your presentation and with six thousand videos in 50 different languages uh, etc on and they assume it's there on youtube how do you ensure farmers can filter and get to the video they might be interested in to see or access that information they're looking for? Good question. That's a very good question. So yeah, there, there is a, you know, there's like a search function, uh, people subscribe. I've noticed I've posted videos. Um, I posted a video in here, Rwanda, that's made by some Rwandan counterparts and people in India were like, Oh, we need subtitles for this video. I'm interested in seeing this video. So uh, yeah, it, it, it does require a little bit of digging uh, for the right content. And you know, hopefully the YouTube um, search con um, feature helps with that. But yeah, I, I think we, uh, we've created playlists, for instance, when there's like specialized content we want to share. And I'm going to, I'll put the link up um, on the Excellent. chat. Great. Well, I'm, I'm going to um, thank you very much for your presentation. And um, I, uh, it's a delight having you here. And I know that you may not spend the rest of the time with us because it's late uh, in the US where you're based. But thank you so much for joining us. Very interesting. And everyone will have a chance to see the links that uh, Jelsey will share with you um, related to digital green. So thank you, Jelsey. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, now, before we move to our next speaker,